Good morning. This is Mother Stephanie, and I welcome you to our morning meditation. I want you to begin thinking about the image of somebody in prayer. As I read a little bit about prayer from a wonderful book called Eternal Echoes by John O'Donohue, <clears throat> he says one of the most tender images is the human person at prayer. When the body gathers itself before the divine, a stillness deepens. The blaring din of distraction ceases, and the deeper tranquility within the heart envelops the soul and the body. To see people at prayer is a touching sight. For a while they have become unmoored from the grip of society, work, and role. It is as if they have chosen to enter into a secret belonging, carried within the soul. They rest in that inner temple, impervious to outer control or claiming. A person at prayer also evokes the sense of vulnerability and fragility. Their prayer reminds us that we are mere guests on the earth pilgrims who always walk on unsteady ground, carrying in earthen vessels multitudes of longing. There's so much beauty and goodness in the world. In our times, it is fashionable to paint everything first in its darkest colors. The darkness becomes so absorbing that we never reach the color and light to concentrate exclusively on the negative makes us feel powerless and victimized. It is only fair to underline the joy that is in creation too. Joy is a dignified presence. If we insist on being morose and depressed, joy will not interrupt us or intrude upon us. There's a subtle rhythm to joy. Until you break forth to embrace it, you will never know its power and delight. Prayer is an ancient longing. It has a special light, hunger, and energy. Our earliest ancestors knew and felt how the invisible eternal world enveloped every breath and gesture. They recognized that the visible world was merely a threshold. Their first representations on the walls of caves expressed the desire to name, beseech, and praise. To the ancient eye, the world was a mystery, independent in its own rhythm and poise. <clears throat> Nature was a primal mother with an unfathomable mind. She could be tender or cruel. The force and surface of nature were merely the exterior visage that concealed a wild yet subtle mind. For the ancient's prayer was an attempt to enter into harmony with the deeper rhythm of life. Prayer tempered human arrogance it became the disclosure point of the deeper eternal order. In postmodern society, the isolated individual has become the measure of all things. It is no surprise that in our loss of connection with nature, we have forgotten how to pray. We even believe that we do not need to pray. Prayer is a deeper and more ancient conversation within us. In this sense, the inner life of each person is prayer that commences in the first stir in the womb and ends with the last breath before returning to the invisible world. And then he speaks a bit about the prayer of the poor. 
the desolate, the haunted. He speaks of a church nearby. It's just the ruin of an old church. It's a two-room limestone ruin set in a hazel wood on the side of a valley. I want you to try to imagine what that little church looks like. A little two-room limestone ruin set in a hazel wood on the side of the valley. It's called the Little Wood of the People. This was the church where our people gathered to pray in penal times, when there was a war against faith. Penal laws were those that passed from the 16th century onward, prohibiting the practice of the Catholic faith in Britain and Ireland. There was a price on the head of every priest. My father often told us that during the Mass, watchmen kept lookout at different points on the horizon. The priest celebrated the Mass in one of the rooms, but never showed his face to the congregation. Remaining unknown, he protected himself and his people. This little penal ruin stands as a poignant metaphor of resistance and desire for the divine that an empire could not kill. Prayer is often the space from which the poor and the oppressed retrieve and express their nobility and graciousness. Prayer awakens the soul and opens doors of possibility in bleak and brutal times. It keeps the dream and longing of the heart alive. It is the only refuge of belonging in extreme times. Maybe next Tuesday I'll read the next part, which talks about a prayer is never wasted and why that is. Prayer is the only refuge of belonging in extreme times. Now I want you to close your eyes, get very comfortable, and I want us to take four beautiful, deep breaths, receiving into ourselves the Holy Spirit. And as we receive the Holy Spirit into ourselves, I want you to have a vision that St. Patrick had. Only you might create it with your own holy imagination. As you breathe in the Holy Spirit, I want you to see within yourself a man kneeling in prayer. Fervent, deep, passionate prayer. All right? Let's experience that then. I want you to exhale. Receive the Holy Spirit. Hold it there. See the prayer. And now exhale everything that's not compatible with God's holiness. Receive the Spirit. Inhaling. See the man that prays within you. And now exhale. Removing everything that's not compatible with God's holiness. Again, receive the Holy Spirit. Hold it. Listen to that man within you who prays. Exhale everything that is not compatible with God's holiness. And for the fourth time, inhale. Receive within yourself the Holy Spirit. See within yourself that man that prays within you. Hear, if you can, the words, the unintelligible words of his prayer. 
Now exhale everything that is not compatible with God's holiness. Keeping your eyes closed and looking inward, St. Patrick, on the threshold of his being called to Ireland, saw within him, in a vision, a man praying within him. And he prayed in a language St. Patrick could not understand. Of course, he wasn't St. Patrick then, just Patrick. He couldn't understand the words of the prayer, but he could tell it was a powerful prayer, full of faith and intensity. And he asked, who is this who prays within me? And God revealed to him, it was Jesus himself who prayed within him. Prayed that he might hear the call of God in his life. Prayed that he might be the person that it was God's delight for him to become. Jesus prays within you too. We think about the, the body being the temple of the Holy Spirit. It is also the throne of Christ. And the temple itself is the creation of God the Father. You are full of the presence of God. And Jesus prays within you. And at another time he heard the voice praying, but saw no man. Even the Spirit was praying within him. Not just praying within him, but praying for him. <laughs> you have a powerful advocate in our Lord Jesus Christ. How could there be a greater advocate than the Son of the living God? As you go throughout your day today, I want you to take a few moments to stop and breathe. And this time as you breathe, receiving the Holy Spirit, watch the Holy Spirit wash down over a prayerful Jesus within you. And let that give you hope. Let give, that give you the sense of your assurance of belonging not just to something greater than yourself, but to someone who is greater than all that is. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth and be who you are called to be.